Okay, ready to start. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for everybody joining us today. Um, what you just saw, by the way, we're just a couple minutes late getting started, but uh, we set up a link room system in about 15 minutes there, which is uh, no small feat, but it shows how easy it is to do. So um, the theme of Smart's uh, presence here at LinkCon this year is the next level, and most of that is based on we just announced yesterday the next level of link room system with some pretty awesome new functionality, and we're definitely going to demo that to you today. Um, but I want to take this concept of next level and apply it at some different levels as well. And so starting at a really high level with a market view, a market insights view, um, then we're going to hear from a couple of our customers. Then we're going to give you a demo of what is the next level. And we have our CTO here with us today and our global leader of our SRS practice. And then finally, I'm hoping that each one of you can leave this room with um, how do I take my organization to the next level with some tips and tools and things that you can do that aren't just about the technology. Okay, so that's, that's kind of our goal for today. Um, I'm going to go forward. I just have one slide on what a link room system is. I'm pretty sure that almost everybody in the room knows all about what a link room system is, uh, but I thought I'd better, just for the uninitiated, start with, so when we're talking link room system and the smart room system, what exactly are we talking about? This is my favorite slide of how to depict the link room system is you have this awesome um, enterprise-ready UCC platform with Link, and it's got audio conferencing, web conferencing, video, voicemail, telephony, presence, IM, and that's all a great collaboration and communication experience. And then you go into the meeting room, and what happens is that great uh, communication goes away, and it's a myriad of technologies and eight remote controls on the, on the table that you're supposed to figure out, and it takes 15 minutes to start the meeting. Nothing is familiar. Uh, the layperson can't figure any of the technology out. And it's like, why, why does it have to be this way when we have this link platform that everybody knows how to use? So we position the, the link room system as the missing piece of this puzzle where you now incorporate the meeting room within a link environment. People who are familiar with and on link come into a room, press a blue button, the meeting starts immediately. And it's just familiar. It's what everybody already knows how to do. So there's no training, uh, no setup required. Uh, it's just, let's get right to the meeting and start being productive. Okay, so we're incredibly excited about this platform. We've been at it for around three years now. Um, two years of uh, rigorous engineering and development with Microsoft. Around a year ago at LinkCon, last year we launched. And now we've been dealing with, we have hundreds of customers worldwide that have deployed LinkRoom system. And now we're here announcing our next level. Um, I want to start at this market insights level, like I said and talk about some market data we have on. So how is it going for customers? Is it working? Is it actually making them more productive? Is link room system actually improving people's collaboration? And um, we took a look at our data that we have, and we thought maybe it's a bit too early to tell, but we actually found some really startling data on how link room system is really helping customers with tangible business value within their organizations. So that's what I want to talk about for, for five minutes or so. So we've been studying this topic of collaboration uh, for over a year now. We've assessed 1,400 customers worldwide. And the cool thing about this study is it's ongoing. So as I'm talking about this and you're seeing some of this data, you can put your own organization in, into this study. It's online. You get an instant benchmark report and an evaluation. OK, so what it is, it's actually quite simple. It's what are you doing for collaboration in your, in your organization? What are your practices? What are your policies? What technology are you, are you deploying? And then second, how's that going for you? What's your value? Are things improving? Are they getting better on your team? So it's not about smart technologies. It's not about link room systems. It's around technology, process, people. Because everybody agrees collaboration is super important. But are we actually getting better? Um, and that's what this study is all about. So you can see there's a good cross-section there in terms of geographies and size of company and industries. We've got all sorts of different splits of this data that I'd love to take you through, but we'd, we'd be here for the entire hour with me just talking about the research. So what I wanted to do is really just show you the top key level findings. <clears throat> First finding is that every company falls into one of these five phases on a maturity model. And what the data does is actually gives um, the organization a score out of 1 to 100, 1 being where we don't collaborate at all, 100 being we have incredible inspired collaboration every day in each and every meeting. So what this study shows is, so where, is, where are we? Where are global enterprises when it comes to this? So the first couple of levels, unsupported means 
we basically have no strategy for collaboration. We don't even ha have any collaboration tools. We're, we're, we're kind of nowhere on this, okay? And then the next level up, not integrated, means, well, we have some collaboration tools. It might even be flip charts and post-it notes. Uh, it might be some technology, uh, but we really don't have a strategy. We don't have anything integrated. It doesn't tie together, okay? So those, for those bottom two rungs, what percentage do you guys think encompass those two bottom rows, or those two rungs in the maturity model? Any guesses? More than half. More than half. 60%. Any higher? Any lower? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going in the right direction. It's 75%. So 75% of the organization self-assess of being in these lower areas. 75% um, of organizations in business today have no collaboration strategy. So that's really telling is there's a lot of technology out there and there's a lot of tools, but there's not that much in terms of strategy and what are we trying to accomplish and how are we measuring our success and so forth. Now this third level is called integrated. That means our technology is integrated. Our technology is on one platform, it's seamless, it talks to each other. It's still not the people and process integration piece. That is, we have standards, we have a roadmap, we have technology that talks to each other. So that's, that's another 15%. And then the top 10% are in these areas of collaborative and optimized. The difference in the top 10% here is integration with technology, people, and process. And what that means is we have a strategy for collaboration. We have metrics. We have a change management procedure. Uh, there might be a head of collaboration in our organization. We have a way of measuring our success over time. So that's the first key finding, and hopefully you find that interesting, but there might all, you know, also be kind of a so what question in your mind. So that's, that's interesting. Is there a better value? Can you put a business perspective on what it means to get up to that 10%? So this is probably the most interesting finding in the study, is there's a direct correlation to getting up the chart in terms of value and getting up into that top 10% and the business value as depicted by this green line. So the companies that can get... And, and it's, it's quite a pop as well to get to the integrated phase, which is we have technology integration from a collaboration perspective. And then if you can get into the people process technology, the upper two rungs, you can see that business value is incredibly over-indexed. We ask the folks in our study, so what does business value mean to you? And what, what are you getting out of um, getting up into these higher echelons? <clears throat> it's interesting. Most people would say, and it would be intuitive to say, well, it's going to be about cost savings, isn't it? Because you're going to get people off planes and they're going to be uh, able to conduct business remotely, and we're going to save a bunch of money. And that is true, but it's actually the lowest one, as you can see on the chart. Th this great collaboration is actually not about saving money, although you do save money, and it becomes almost a, a side benefit. The benefits are really faster decision-making, improved productivity, time to market, taking risk out of your business. And what you're seeing here in terms of when it says 5x, 3x, what does that mean? That means that the organizations in the top 10% get five times or three times more of that business value as compared to the ones who are lower in the maturity model. So that's the study. Um, what I wanted to close with on this is, so what about link room systems specifically? So, so far this has been about general collaboration. It could be a link environment. It could be a different UCC environment or none at all, okay? But what we recently did is we have enough data now that we are able to model uh, what we call an LRS cluster. Without getting too research geeky on you, what we did is we went in and we looked at a number of the practices in our database that were consistent with uh, an LRS feature set. So you can see them on the screen. We have a setup that participants can walk up and use. That's, that's a best practice, okay? All of these are best practices. Adoption of interactive displays and conferencing software. Participants can quickly set up, start, and manage uh, a meeting. Remote employees contribute as if they're in the same room. And presenters have access to reliable technology and dynamic presentations and content. Uh, interaction. So basically we took this feature set out of our best practices and we said what would that look like as a cluster? And the results were pretty startling. So as you can see by the purple diamond, the LRS cluster is um, a high performing cluster, a, a score out of 69 whereas the best of breed is an 89 in our database. Just to give you a measuring stick, the average in our database when we look across all the 1400 is 37. So we have a 37 for the, the mean in our database, and we have a 69 with the LRS cluster, which means, in turn, faster time to decisions, better productivity, increased decision-making for those groups. So 
This was um, incredibly encouraging and powerful to see. Question, sir? That's right. This is this is not a this is not a study about smart technologies. This is uh, any LRS platform. Yeah. So, in summary, um, collaboration is still immature in global enterprises. This is not about communication. This is not saying video conferencing is not mature. This is saying the craft and the art of collaboration, where everybody can contribute like they're in the same room. We get things done really quickly. It's all seamless. It's easy. Um, that's still immature. 75% of organizations have no strategy. Those that can move up that chain are getting incredible results. They see up to 92% increase in productivity and a 63% reduction in their expenses. Um, investing in a system like a linkroom system, as we've shown, can offer some immediate benefits. And as I said a couple of times, this is something you can participate in. Um, it's online. It's no cost. You can come in as an individual or you can come in as a team and do different cross comparisons across your organization. It's a great way to benchmark where are we now? Is this working three months or six months from now? So I'll talk a little bit more about that um, at the end of the session, but it's something that if you're interested in, we'd love to have your participation. Every single day this database grows. Um, and as you've seen by the, the first page, it's truly a global study. So that's this top level. I want to talk about the next level in the market, what's going on in the market. But let's kind of take a step down now and talk about some tangible uh, customer examples, because this has been data, and data is interesting, but I think what's fascinating is real live people who are doing things and what are their lessons learned. So we're really thrilled today to have two of our customers with us, and uh, Fraser Cousins is our global lead for Smart Room System, and he's going to facilitate a bit of a question and answer. So Fraser, over to you. Thanks, Jeff. Come on up, guys. Uh, we have prepared some questions for you guys to get some real-time uh, feedback on how customer deployments have gone and really uh, get a better sense of kind of the results that they're seeing in their organization. So let me introduce our two panelists. Uh, uh, Greg, why don't you introduce yourself to the team and uh, tell us of what meetings were like pre-LRS on your link platform. Sure. So uh, my name is Greg Gerwing, and I work at a major oil and gas company. And the reason I have to phrase that, obviously, is because oil and gas companies really do not like speaking publicly and officially. But really, there is a great story here. You know, we, we speak for a a large segment of the business and huge demand for collaboration. Lots of people all over the place. It's core to the business. And we're thinking really, really aggressively about how do we stay connected and very tough to do in geographically dispersed areas. So uh, yeah, fairly large. We have a, about a 5,000 person enterprise voice at the moment. And we're still plowing ahead with another couple thousand at the edges at hundreds and hundreds of small sites, very challenging. And uh, you know, uh, conferencing wasn't the core goal when we went and started working on our link uh, practice a couple of years ago. So oh, about two years ago, we're plowing through our link enterprise voice. And really, the goal was, like a lot of people, that Nortel system, right? We simply cannot get people to fix it anymore. So we're going through our enterprise voice exercise. And uh, it's going well. And then I get a call one day to go into a boardroom and put a phone on the table and leave. That's all we were doing. So you go into that room, I put it down, and you look around, and I see three different technology partners in the room, and none of them are talking to each other. And when you start thinking about Link, and you start picking it up, and you're thinking about converged infrastructure and all these ideas, and you walk in, it was phenomenally embarrassing, in my opinion, how little thought was being put to strategy in our most expensive rooms in the building. And millions of dollars spent on this stuff. And it was all brand, brand new. And no thought was put to how it all ties together. So immediately, we started thinking about how do we get all this stuff to play together. And we didn't even know Link Room System as a technology existed at that time. But we already felt this need. So we really started challenging ourselves. And, and that kind of brought our group, the Link Group, into our, our AV world. So, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Victor, uh, why don't you introduce yourself as well and tell us about your organization on your link path and journey and what meetings were like pre-link room system for your organization. Thanks. Um, I'd like to apologize a little bit for my voice, so uh, getting over. Who else has voices like Victor Snake? <laughs> I, I, I got one of those a little bit this morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I uh, work for Marquette University. Um, we've, uh, uh, our initial... Uh, rollout of uh, OCS R2 was in a pilot mode to see if uh, we can get off of our Siemens system. Um, and uh, that proved to be successful. So uh, uh, we decided to go that route. And um, um, the, from the conferencing perspective, um, our environment was so disparate. Um, you know, we had old 
ISDN equipment. Um, we had audio bridges that we would have to buy and uh, set up uh, ahead of time. Um, we had rooms that uh, sometimes had telephony equipment, um, sometimes would have these uh, video systems. Um, sometimes they'd just be a uh, monitor, a big, uh, big screen. So um, there was a variety of, of different rooms, different systems. Um, none of them really worked together. Um, but uh, um, when we uh, started to look at uh, uh, the LMRS, um, you know, that was, that was one of the things that, that we were really trying to, um, uh, to fix in our environment was, uh, you know, why, why buy all of these disparate systems? Um, you know, we, uh, we already went down the link road and, uh, you know, we were trying to look for uh, uh, something that, uh, uh, that was really going to tie that together. So um, that's kind of where we were started out uh, at Marquette. It was just, you know, you got 50 different systems and none of them were talking to each other, so... All right, cool, cool. So, uh, Greg, uh, you heard about this link room system, and uh, talk, walk us through the first journey of how you uh, began the, your evaluation phase of how Link would really apply to uh, your organization. Yeah, so, you know, we, we have, uh, no one will be surprised, Polycom, a lot of Polycom, a little bit of Tamburg, a little bit of Telepresence, and we're thinking, you know, should we try and use value bridges, RTV licensing, how we can get this stuff to work? We get it in, we test it. None of it feels like a million bucks. And then about three months later, we hear last year, this time, uh, link room systems. So uh, we're very fortunate. I'm very spoiled. Turns out Smart's actually in the same town. So we actually drive across town. We go to the demo center, and uh, we see it. And a gentleman in the back of the room shows us, shows us a system. And I bring about 10 people from my IS department because it looks too good to be true. It really does. Like when you watch the videos and you see it actually work and it's actually easy, it's like, I don't believe that. There's got to be something happening. So we walked in, we see the demo center, like, yeah, we're poking it, it's working, but what do they have in their environment? So we immediately said, look, we got to get one in our building. And even our AV team was still really intimidated, like this is a huge divergence from what we're doing strategy-wise. So we kind of took our, our cheapest room and uh, we plunked it in and uh, I got it up and running and it was a lot easier. You know, the first one takes more work as always with any kind of infrastructure, but you got to have your 2013 in a good space for that to happen. Uh, and immediately, immediately, as soon as I brought it in, I, my boss, he said, hey, cool, let me grab my boss and my boss. And suddenly the CIO shows up on the first day I have the thing running, comes in, he says to me, uh, yeah, I like it. I'm rescheduling my senior management meeting here tomorrow. Make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little intimidated, right? We're just really digging in our enterprise voice rollout. I'm not fully confident in Link, actually. I'm like, I don't know how bulletproof this thing is. And somehow I've just made policy. So I'm really worried. CIO comes in the next day, and I'm not even there. He shows up early, of course. 20 people, really fancy, 10-person room. They're all sweating bullets. He walks in. He's like, all right, how does this work? He just taps the button. Nobody told him about it at all. And it works. And our regional managers show up on the screen, and he hasn't seen them face-to-face -face in a meeting room in months on his existing system that he just bought six months ago. It's never worked. And he looks at me, and I'm just running in the door to try and get ready. And he's like, nope, we're good, you can leave. <laughs> and he then took over my room, and he never let us have it back. He rescheduled all his meetings there, and uh, it's really kind of gone on from that. So Awesome, yeah. awesome. Victor, how about uh, at Marquette? Uh, you, uh, you had the opportunity to really have Link Room System for a great deal of time. You saw the curve of how meetings really have changed at Marquette. Uh, tell us about some surprising dynamics of how link meetings are kind of transform a little bit uh, when you have groups interacting with also remote individuals working from home. Yeah, <clears throat> um, so we, uh, we've been on the, uh, this journey, like I mentioned, since OCSR2. Um, we were part of the Microsoft TAP uh, since Link 2010 uh, and are still participants. Um, they actually approached us and, and were telling us about this new feature that they were going to add and uh, asked if we wanted to, to partner with someone. And we said, sure, we'll, we'll try it out. Um, and luckily for us, it was these guys. Um, so they came in, brought a bunch of equipment, um, you know, started to talk about what this thing was going to do, how it was going to interact with Link. And, um, you know, I'm nodding my head and, and, you know, yeah, sounds good. You know, let's, let's see how it actually works. Um, so uh, we started to, to use it. And, um, um, you know, right away I could see that this was a, a different type of system. You know, this wasn't something where you'd have to look around from room to room. 
this isn't something that you know I'd have to worry about the audio working with the video working and then you had this thing with this whiteboard and you can do stuff on the whiteboard and you can do collaboration on the whiteboard um, so uh, that was a completely different experience than, than we'd ever seen um, we started to use it for all of our meetings uh, in IT um, we do a lot of uh, collaboration uh, we also have a lot of remote workers so um, those sessions would be done remotely um, the other just amazing thing for us was we have a lot of people that come on campus uh, and they're either not link users, uh, you know, they may not even be on wireless. So if they're doing a presentation, to have them be able to plug in, show their desktop, and then everybody on the link meeting can see what's on their desktop, uh, that, that really blew us away. So, um, you know, it, it, for the, the first year, we were really just trying to wrap our head around, I mean, this, uh, we're not quite sure where it would fit. I mean, it, it, it fits so many different categories, and there's so many things at the university that could really use this. Um, it, uh, uh, it, it really kind of took us a while and took us showing all the different departments in the different areas to kind of get their idea of, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we could use it for X. So that's, that's kind of where we, uh, we ended up. Awesome, Victor. That's a good tip, guys. So on your awareness phase, when you're doing an evaluation, Make sure you do a little bit of prep on how to be able to introduce to your end users um, the new system. Like at Marquette, there's actually a really cool marketing shot of Danny and Victor of showing off their new system. And Greg uh, didn't even get a chance to make his material. He was just handling all his uh, meetings uh, coming in. So uh, really think about that phase. It's going to be crucial for how you can really change the meetings in your organization. Uh, Greg, tell me a little bit about your deployment so far in terms of return on investment, the results you're really seeing in terms of the end users that are interacting with that every day. And, What's the results that you've seen so far? Well, um, it, it's funny, just to wrap, the, go to the end. People fight over the rooms now, so they know where I sit, they come find me, and instead of coming yelling like they normally do when the room doesn't work, they come and find, what's a new room that people don't know about yet so I can get in there, <laughs> get it on the gal before everybody else does get my, but um, return on investment is a really interesting thing, and, and, and we're a little bit spoiled, I'm gonna say, in oil and gas, it's all about productivity, right? It's all about how do we get more with what we have, it's not necessarily a revenue question. So that was brought up a little earlier, and it's definitely true. It's not, you know, I like to make my CFO happy and tell him that, you know, I'm reducing costs, which I am. That makes that part of the conversation with procurement very easy. Makes them happy, makes my life easier. But what we've found is that the fact that people are confident that once they use it once, they can go in and actually use the damn thing and press it, and it actually works, is amazing. So people, to be honest, they've given up on AV. They've really stopped using it. And we have very nice, shiny rooms. They just didn't even try anymore because it's so embarrassing to go in and try and get it running, and you'll never hear about it. And you have to go poke them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I just don't try it anymore. So the fact that we actually have people coming back to it is actually the biggest thing. So they're actually starting to use it. And then I get the feedback saying, you know what, the fact that I can actually engage with my regional managers and my team has changed the way I feel about them and change the way we actually work. And it, it sounds so cheesy. We've been all fighting for this for a long time. But we're actually getting that unsolicited inside the business that people are driving for it. So the, the adoption, the passion has been huge. We're also finding when we rolled out Enterprise Voice, you know, you send all that training material out to everybody, right? And you say, here's conferencing and here's screen sharing and here's all the features. And 90% of people just say, I pick up the phone and it works, I'm done. They don't, they're like, and they're, they're good. And now we're a year into our enterprise voice for most of our users. So now when they hear link room systems, they're actually half the meeting, they're asking about, oh, that's, that's screen sharing? I heard somebody say that. So that's what this is, how do I do that at my desk? I didn't know that. Conferencing? So what we're finding, it's actually driving, now people have confidence in link, it's driving them back to ask about all the other features. So LRS, ironically, is actually driving more value back into link for us as an enterprise. And I didn't plan for that, and it's interesting, I'm sure a lot of folks have had Link where you didn't think something was gonna happen, and your users educate, right? It happens a lot with the LRS as well. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So Victor, uh, you, you've done a very large uh, device, uh, uh, device rollout inside Marquette. Uh, you've had a chance to really get a better sense of how Link Room System fits in so many different uh, ways. Uh, tell us about what's next for Marquette, of where you see Link Room System going uh, over time. Yeah, um, we've got about um, 3,000 uh, voice users on Link right now. 
Um, and uh, you know, we've we've been in this this process. We're actually still finishing up our migration. Um, we're about three fourths of the way done because we're doing network upgrades uh, along the way. But uh, you know, once we got this system and we're, was able to to kind of try it out and see, and, and but more importantly, demonstrate to other people what it can do. Um, we started to get some feedback from the different areas. So um, one of the areas that was uh, interested in this was our nursing department. Um, they do a lot of collaboration with hospitals uh, across the state, and both they travel, and then they also communicate with people at those places. Um, and you know, trying to get different vendors to work and different meetings to work um, was, was kind of a pain. But when they saw this system, uh, their ears and eyes got, got a little bit bigger and uh, they could see the possibilities. Uh, but more importantly was the ability for end users to easily join a link meeting via uh, the web app. So that was uh, 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 that's kind of an area that uh, we, we saw a lot of interest. The other area at the university um, that we found out about <coughs> was our foreign language area. Um, they in the past and currently are still are using Skype just regular Skype client, little video cam, uh, and they participate with uh, video sessions with people in South America, uh, Europe, in order to practice uh, their language skills. And um, you know, they again have, have kind of uh, approached uh, us, saying, "Well, what can you guys do?" Um, and you know, for large meetings, and you know, the system's a little bit different because it's not just audio and video. You got collaboration. So if you're in a classroom setting and you're wanting to not only, you know, practice foreign language, but actually have lessons, um, that collaborative effort uh, is, is kind of really brings that extra dimension out that, uh, you know, they, they didn't even think about before. They were just thinking, oh, video, audio, that's all we need. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things like that that you don't realize are out there until you start showing people what this room system can do and then you hear their ideas. So. Awesome. Uh, Greg, how about yourself? You're, uh, you had a really good chance of getting some really great productivity results so far. Where, where is your organization going next with Room System? Well, so, you know, we got, we got a fair smattering of uh, eval units out. So we have some in Atlantic, Core, uh, you know, Northern Alberta as well. And uh, really wanted to kick the tires and make sure it felt good. And uh, one of my big personal agendas come down to the conference is to see what the atmosphere is and the commitment is from Microsoft and, and all the, the LRS partners to see, is this thing alive or not? And I'm really happy to see that it's only really six month old as a product. We got one of the first ones off the, the train and uh, in September and uh, to see a lot of maturity and a lot of feedback from, from us and other folks solicited and integrated and actually on the, the roadmap is huge. But um, we're, we're really charging ahead. So uh, we have an RFP. We're really, there's a deep committal from the business to they're ready to transform now. And uh, I think we're really going to see a massive, massive uh, change this year in the way we do it. And we have a, a town hall for our entire ICE department, me and 800 of my closest friends. And uh, the CIO made a special point out of everything he's doing, you know, SAP upgrades for, uh, you know, very large amounts and things like that. The one thing he was proud of that he felt like IS had done a great job of to, for the business was Link and Link Room Systems. So it's actually one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle in an enterprise right now. And uh, I think uh, having used it for six months, just like Link, I didn't really have a lot of faith in it at first. I was like, yeah, we're going to do this thing. It's, it's solid, and we're really excited, and people absolutely can't get enough of it. So we're really excited. I'm going to have a very busy year. So, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Let's hear it for Victor and Greg. So what we heard there was a lot of different areas around more, more capabilities, more change, more capabilities and utilization of overall systems are using your link platform. So if you're uh, uh, down the path of evaluation, you can actually go to the hands-on lab. They actually doubled the amount of capacity of sessions to actually do your own deployment and actually practice the, that experience in Copper Leaf 12. I encourage you to go see that. But to tell you a little bit about where we were going in terms of more, I want to introduce Warren Barkley, my CTO, our CTO at Smart, uh, to share a little bit of uh, our vision where Linkroom Systems is going and uh, introduce what we call the next level. Warren. Yeah, thanks. 
<clears throat> it's good to see lots of uh, folks I recognize in the audience. Uh, I think, I mean, one of the things, uh, I joined Smart about a year ago with Neil, a little bit more than a year ago. And one of the questions I get asked a lot was, uh, uh, did you get fired from Microsoft? And that's why. Did, why did you join Smart? And, uh, and, it was, and I know the popular belief is because I wanted to live in Calgary. That is not true. <laughs> it was minus 30 for a week before Christmas, just to be clear. I skate to work. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's really, I think that the, the thing that I saw in Smart and the thing about where we're going and, and, and uh, was that last 15%, uh, if we could get that last 15%, we could really change the industry and how things were happening. And one of the things that, and, and, and with due respect to Microsoft and Cisco and Avaya and things like that, voice, video, data sharing is done. It's done. You know, when I, when I was involved with this conference two, four years ago, there was like 100 people and a dog in the room, like in the, in the basement of the Hyatt in Redmond, um, and now there's 2,000 or so people here. It's unbelievable growth. Part of that is that we, you know, a lot of us all believe that the software, uh, you know, communication system that, that uh, Microsoft built actually works. And I think that the interesting thing is, is that, yeah, it works. And what else are you going to do with voice? There's not a lot, you know, from an innovation perspective. It works. You can raise the SLA. You can make it go onto different mobile devices and things like that. But in the way of, is there what else can you do with voice? It's pretty hard to see what else with video. You know, video is, and especially with the generations who are younger than me, video is pervasive. You know, I don't know how many of you. We have an education business, but I don't know how many of you watch or have teenagers at home and watch the way they do homework. It's not the way that I did homework, which was in my room with a light and a pencil writing stuff down. It's basically, they're on a computer, they got Skype up, they're IMing, they're sharing documents back and forth, they're working together, and they actually, that's how they do homework. Any teacher who thinks that kids do projects on their own is imagining things, right? But isn't that what we want from our workers? To be collaborating, isn't that what we're supposed to be teaching them? And I think that that's video. They're all about video. And, and one of the things, you know, um, Johan at Shell um, used to repeat to me all the time was, you know, why did you guys deploy Link? It was because we need the next generation of workers who expect video. They expect IM, they expect video, things like that. Well, what else are we going to do with video? We can do avatars and put, you know, nice little horns on people's heads and do stuff like that. But the reality is, is that we can make the quality go up and make it for, me, for real, but where's the seed change in video? It's very difficult to see where that seed change comes from. Data sharing, you know, we've been sharing kind of desktops for a while now, and I think that we've done that. But th when I look at, you know, what is the next kind of dimension in the way of collaboration, it's really interaction on the data. And so how do we interact on the data? What do we do with that? What does that mean? So I'll, I'll share a couple little stories with you about that. <clears throat> so one of them is this construction company in Florida. And the interesting thing with construction is is they are, um, from a time perspective, every second of their day is all about, if I can, if I can beat these dates, I'm going to get a bonus. It's always about that with these guys, right? Every second. And so this construction company, they're building a, a tower in Taipei. They have civil engineers and architects and all these different people working on this project. And then they have people building. And they have people on site. So do you, when you run into a problem, how do you deal with it? Well, you get them on a jet and you fly them, often a private jet, because every hour that those guys aren't building that tower is millions and millions of dollars. And that's true in a lot of different manufacturing industries. It's not just construction. And so really for them, they needed to be able to interact on the data. It's not good enough to actually show it and share it and just talk about it. They needed to stand up and interact on it. And that's what this new level of LRS is about. It's about you can bring your own data. And you can interact on that data. And so how do we annotate and circle and, and uh, point at things and move things and change things? And for these guys, it was a really easy thing because it was one of these things where this conduit is 15 meters to the left, and it should be 15 meters to the right. But the guy in sight can't make that decision because he's not a civil engineer, a structural engineer, or whatever. But the people for that are in different places. So the ability for them to pull the blueprint, have the guy in sight with an iPad going, 
hey, is this, where is this thing? What is this thing? And talk about it. No, circle it. This is where it came out, by the way. And this is not the way we thought it was going to be. And have those guys, no, I approve this change. Make it happen. They keep on building the tower. That's huge. That's what the next dimension of collaboration is really going to be. It's really how do you interact with the data that you have. You know, a few years ago, I, I, uh, I was talking with um, uh, one of the big banks. It starts with a G, ends with a sax. And uh, <laughs> the CIO said, uh, he repeated this thing to me, and I th he said it in public too, which was, you know, telepresence is the private jet of video conferencing. I think that's true. I think there's a place for that. And I think there's a place for different types of systems. But when it comes to people who are working, who are collaborating together, they've got to be able to touch and feel and use the data. And so that's really where we're going um, from the next. The other interesting part um, for me, is, as we kind of look at this next level, and is, is when you think about collaboration, we were at, Neil and I were in um, uh, back east at this place called the Perimeter Institute. Have you ever heard of this? It's this physics kind of think uh, tank. And Stephen Hawkins is one of the founders, and, and so he'll be wheeling down the wall and the, the uh, hallway, and they have all these uh, physics guys there um, who who uh, who are building these you know models and things like that. And so we, we just just stat, you know stood back and watched what was going on. Actually, I don't think you were there. I think it was just me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I just feel like Neil's always behind me, <laughs> my boss walking around in front of me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and. And one of the interesting things to these guys is, uh, there's a couple interesting things. One has no relevance, but I'll tell you anyway, which is the older physicists use blackboards and the younger ones use whiteboards. That's kind of interesting, right? So the building's actually split in half. Blackboards on the left and whiteboards on the right. That makes sense, that doesn't really matter. But the other thing was is that you see these guys in these, were in these breakout rooms with a whiteboard that's about 80 inches filled with script that's this big. And they're sitting there collaborating, and then when they get to the, 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 to the 80 inches is filled, they're like, oh, what do I do? Oh, I take a picture? I, I don't know. And, and then, you know, one of them, the joke is, one of them bumps on the board, and, you know, the meaning of life goes away because he just wiped away the whiteboard, right? <laughs> but the, the interesting thing with these guys is these guys are collaborating the way our engineers want to collaborate, you know? And, but they don't have the digital tools to make that happen. And so I think that this is, this is where... We see the future, and this is how we see. And it's not vertical specific, I don't think. You know, we've, I have a, there's a bank that I've been working with who doing the same thing, same thing in construction and different parts of industry. It's really about how do we interact with that data. So this is actually a fairly complex thing of what we did. It's simple from a technology perspective, but it's complex to understand. And so when we, when we looked at this next level stuff, we said was, you know, what's a way to really extend so that we can do this collaboration, two-way inking thing with, with LRS? So we did was, we said, you know what, when you, one of the, uh, I lost a bet, which I don't lose many bets, but this one was, uh, um, when you walk into a link room system and plug in your laptop, does anybody know what, what happens when you plug in a laptop? Some of you use it today. It works. It works. That's good. not exactly what I was looking for. But when you plug in your laptop, basically, automatically, it takes your screen, shares it to one of the displays in front, screen scrapes it, and sends it into the meeting. That's pretty cool. I lost that bet because I was like, wow, that's kind of magic. And uh, I had something to do with building this software, so I was surprised to find that that is. That's really cool that you just walk in. But the reality is, is that that content is static. You can't ink on that content. You can't do anything with that content. All it is, it shows in the meeting. And as I said before, data sharing is done. It's interesting. It's really good to review stuff that way, but the reality is, is where we want collaboration to go is people interacting on data. And so what we did was we basically said, how do we make that thing touch two-way capable? So when you come in, plug in your tablet, plug in your laptop, what happens now is you walk up to the screen and you can touch and annotate on it. That means, and this is a big piece, is that I bring my AutoCAD on my engineering laptop and plug it in. I can walk up to the screen and I can ink on this, I can change it around, I can do stuff with it, and I can really work. And it's really about interacting with it. And that is that simple. Like, all of this has to be that simple. Because if it's more complicated than that, and there's a remote control with 36 buttons in the room, as, as Greg and Victor are talking about, no one's going to use it. We all know that, right? We walked in, and, and uh, my favorite was an accounting firm in London 
who had a guy in a red jacket who sat outside of every video conferencing door um, with a polyester tie on to help you get into the room, right, and into the meeting. It's not interesting unless people can actually use it. And so what we did is we basically make it, bring in your laptop, plug it in, and you have touch interaction. You walk up to the board, you've got all your gestures, you can move it around, you have an infinite canvas, you have the ability to actually interact on that data. And we're going to demo that for you today. And I think that it's, it's really interesting when you show this to people what they can do to it. But the part of it is, is people don't actually totally believe it. Because when you plug it in, they're like, what do you mean I can walk up and touch it? And actually, that's, that's part of it, is that people have to discover this and have to put it into their workflow. But, uh, but especially for engineers, um, for designers, and people like that whose interaction model about how they iterate on things is important, this ends up being a huge piece um, to them. And the funny is the architecture firm I was talking to, a lot of the stuff they do is public projects. They do a lot of interaction with the public. So they actually drag a board out to public meetings, one of these, and then they, and they walk up, and then they want their AutoCAD file on the screen, and then they want the public to actually walk up and go, no, I want the trees to be over here, or I want this to move over there. And this is actually this huge change to the way that the, the public accepts things, the fact that they can interact with that data and actually work with it. It's a big difference to how they do the workflow. So it's really important as, as you're thinking about this is, what is that two-way touch? And when we talk about touch and inking and things like that, you know, we spent 20 years building inking software and touch software. Like it gets, it gets very detailed. It gets down to what is the glass recipe on the touch panel? Because if the glass recipe is wrong and people use their finger on it, it doesn't slide. It takes the skin off your finger. And as soon as that happens, enterprise users, they have no tolerance. They'll just go sit down because it's embarrassing, it didn't work, whatever, I don't know. When I pick up the pen, the pen's got to feel like a pen. It's got to work like a pen. These are all things that we spent, you won't imagine the amount of money, and I won't tell Neil because he'll get upset, the amount of money we spent <laughs> designing the pen because it has to feel a certain way or people will go and they'll pick it up and they'll go, ah, I can't. it doesn't feel right, it doesn't use it. These are all these little pieces that you have to do. You have to break these human factors down to make it happen. So we're going to do a little demo right now, aren't we? Absolutely. And you guys are going to show us how this thing works? Absolutely. Good. Uh, so thanks so much, Warren. Uh, uh, I'm going to invite uh, Nick to give me a multi-use demo for you guys because you actually see it. So what we're announcing here today uh, at the show is that any uh, SRS investment you made with Smart on Linkroom System can be capable of this next level uh, capability, as well as any future investment you're doing on our more sizes that we have, from extra small to extra large, can leverage this capability as well. So what essentially this is, is if we're taking interaction to the next level. So beyond just PowerPoint and whiteboarding, you can actually be able to now interact with the programs you use every day. Not only be able to touch, multi-touch, mark up, do a design review, get that contribution happening in the meeting, but you can save that and then send that around or post that to SharePoint and make that happen. No longer are you just going to talk about work. You're going to get work done in your meetings. That's what this is about. So why don't we show you a little bit what that looks like and see where we go from there. Sound good? All right, so we have a laptop right here that we are, I'm going to plug in. I have plugged in by video, and you'll notice on... Room systems, it'll actually automatically detect that you have a content channel that you can share into the meeting. So that's how the local content works in terms of it. just plug it in and it auto detects and you can just click on it and say uh, share. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on desktop share and I'm going to click start sharing uh, for it to uh, post in the system. So with that, uh, you'll notice though, did you notice there's a little red button there? I mean, not, not all you can see though. Um, do you notice that there's green here, red there? What that's telling us is that interaction is not turned on. So there's actually no ability for me to actually interact with this technology whatsoever right now. I'm kind of bound to my laptop. So let's say we're working on that PowerPoint and reviewing that information or doing a whiteboard, and uh, this gentleman said, well, let me share something with you. I have to go back to my laptop and drive the session right from here. Who's been in that meeting where uh, you feel like you're bound to the laptop and you're doing next, next, next on the PowerPoint and you kind of lose your whole audience. You're not able to even see whether they're paying attention. Who's been in that meeting? 
right? Who's been in the meeting the reverse where you, maybe you have an Excel spreadsheet up and you're like, okay, well, what do we do with this information? How do we change what we're getting? And you're getting verbal yells at you of like what you should do to get input that, and you're stuck to the laptop where you're, what, which, which cell are you talking about? And you, which one do you have to update? Who's been in that meeting before? I've been in that meeting. I was in that meeting maybe Monday. <laughs> uh, but that's a crucial. Why are you looking at me? Why is that? It wasn't me. It was Jeff. So what we want to really do is where Smart lives is we live at the group at the intersection of where group meets link. This is where you can really start engaging larger collaboration to happen and have flexibility of remote individuals meeting with groups to change the way they meet. That's what this is all about. And let's just show you how that, that interaction model is going to work a little bit differently. So I'm just going to take the, the cable and plug it in to be able to turn on interaction. And you'll notice now I'm full green. So I got full touch here. I got ability to be able to understand multi-touch, all those capabilities. So I'm able to work, touch, and interact with that technology. And the far end can also fully witness that capability as well. So it's very powerful in terms of allowing you to be able to be uh, at your desk, in the room, seated, or come up to the board and actually work with your interaction model. It's very funny when you actually get link room systems in your organization. You'll find chairs aren't all that used often because the more they get used to the technology, the more they're going to be up at the systems working uh, with changing the way that they're all uh, doing their me meetings overall. So let me show you what this could potentially look like in terms of markup. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, do a demonstration around that. So I mentioned that touch works, but multi-touch also works as well, as well as uh, writing on anything. So I just grabbed a pen here, and let's take a look at this, Nick, and uh, get a better sense of what we can do here. If I look at the results of these numbers, uh, looks like we have a lot of revenue on this particular district, but there's other districts that aren't performing very correctly. Looks like District 2 is underperforming. Perhaps if we make some changes to the design apparel, we could really increase revenue in that, in that area. Yeah, I like, I like the way you're thinking there. I'm wondering if uh, we, can, we can actually change this number here. I got a new forecast number for that a part of that business that, you know, let's see what it would look like if we could actually achieve, achieve a different number. So what if that number was 1,500 and we can actually be able to achieve a different number in that territory? What results would we see? So we would be at 150% of plan if we can achieve that number. And it sounds like we just have some little tweaks on our, some apparel for us to make that happen. Absolutely. Let's switch, switch applications, head over to our design software, and see what we can do from there. Uh, so this is a German company that starts with an A and ends with D does, uh, that uh, does design review apparel every day, uh, doing this interaction model overall. And so the feedback we're hearing is, if we can do some uh, tweaks to localize this in this district, I think we could achieve some new numbers. So Absolutely. And with the Olympics in play right now, perhaps we could customize that as well? I'm wondering if that's a good idea. I'm wondering if we'd like do a, maybe a, a national branding of a flag of some sort. What, where else could we maybe badge this and actually be able to maybe see how that might work on your side? Absolutely. Perhaps we take this, we can rotate it here, minimize it. Maybe we get it on the neck of the, of the jacket as well. Neck, I like it. I like it. We're in Vegas after all. I've seen a lot of neck tattoos. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> what about if we do something like a team name uh, on the back here where we get a better sense of like really localizing that experience? What are your thoughts around that? Absolutely. And I think we need to look at the fit of the product as well. How about we... Yeah, maybe tailor, customize that fit to appeal to a wider demographic. That's a great idea. What if we tailor that in and take out that section there uh, where we both work at once on be able to really review that overall? Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, Nick. Uh, let's get this out and send it over to our uh, design assembly team. Absolutely. I'm just going to go file, save as here, just as I would with any other application. We're going to save it perhaps to a PowerPoint or a PDF based on that end user and what we want to put Yeah, in. let's lock it down uh, to PDF and uh, just get that out to everyone to be able to do it. Maybe post a SharePoint. Absolutely. Awesome. So there gives you a sense, guys, of just a quick day in the life of what you can really do in markup. It's any program that you work with to be able to do your design flow. We actually studied this issue where we actually did a study on how often in the link platform are people doing desktop sharing. Guess what percentage that number is? So when you're doing sharing, what percentage is desktop sharing versus whiteboard or PowerPoint? Take a guess. 70? Did I hear 70? 
Any other numbers? 90? In our study of doing an aggregate view, we think it's up to 77% of the time when people are sharing, it's local laptop in the experience or desktop sharing. And that really revealed to us is that work's really done beyond PowerPoint, right? PowerPoint's great at setting up the story, but when we actually have to interact and be able to get work done, it's happened in other programs. At Smart, we'll turn that into an experience that you can mark up, save, and get that out so you can move on to your next meeting. All right, with that, I'm going to hand over to Jeff. If we have time, we'll take some questions. So um, hopefully you guys uh, appreciate that demo in terms of uh, the differences. I'm going to summarize them here. Everything you've just seen in terms of our next level, um, none of these features and functionality that Fraser and Nick just took you through are available with any other link room system. So the ability to do dual interaction, the ability to uh, mark up on anything, um, not having any boundaries. Uh, you know, we've all been, again, in that meeting where we're writing on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen because we don't want to change the page. We want to stay there. Now, with Unbound, you can just shrink that and, and keep on going. Um, in no other link room system can you do interaction on anything outside of PowerPoint. So whether it's industry applications, uh, the, the Microsoft suite, as we just showed, and uh, that's huge. That really opens up this fourth level of collaboration that Warren was talking about to all sorts of different applications. One thing we didn't talk too much about uh, was um, the line of sizes that we have. So we've added different size lines. Um, we have now extra small all the way up to extra large. Before we had a small, medium, large skew. We can take you through what all those mean. They're actually not, we, we don't name them based on screen sizes. It's based on room sizes. So it really is what size of room are we looking for the LRS in? Uh, from the smallest cubby hole, maybe executive office, caves and coves and all these new design areas that are coming up in business, all the way up to the largest boardroom where you'd want to put in a, a dual 84. So again, the widest range of, of sizes on the market. And then the ability to do work before and after the meeting. It's not just coming into the meeting. It's I can work on a file beforehand. I can bring it in. I can have those markups and annotations. Then I can take it with me on a personal edition and work on it after the fact. So these are the, uh, the five summary areas of what uh, we're announcing here at the show that we're just super excited about, and we hope you are too. So um, just to close out, what are some of the things that you can now do? So there's a couple of the obvious ones. If you're intrigued by this and you'd like to talk to us about your business and your applications, your collaboration health, please come and see us. We're here for the next day, obviously. Booth 115, kind of right at the, at the front of the hallway. And we'd love to, uh, to talk to you in person. On smarttech.com slash smartroom, we have all the details on this uh, com competitive comparisons, uh, data sheets, technical overviews, et cetera, videos that you can see. Um, I want to revisit this, uh, this assessment. So for those of you who are concerned with it, having the collaboration health conversation, come up and talk to me after and grab one of these. You get your own little mini two-inch smart room system. Uh, no charge for that one. And then uh, when, you, when you take off this memory stick and put it into the computer, it drives right into that assessment. So for those of you who are just starting on the journey and saying, but how are we going to measure the success? Because our executives are really going to want to know, is this working? Do it now and then do it again in six months. That's what a lot of our clients are doing. Um, or even if you're just looking to gauge your overall collaboration health without LRS. It's a great, uh, great tool as well. And then um, last and not least, we're gearing up for Enterprise Connect. I'm sure many of you will be there. It's, uh, I think it's in exactly four weeks' time in Orlando. And we have another significant announcement uh, planned for Enterprise Connect with regards to our, our SRS. We don't have the name yet because we're kind of going back and forth between next, next level or next level again. Next, next, neither, next. No, nothing's really <laughs> popping for us yet, but, <clears throat> but we will have sig another significant announcement in four weeks' time. So please, uh, you know, come Enterprise Connect, talk to us, or stay tuned on the social channels for that. So with that, that's, uh, that's our session. Thanks very much. Uh, welcome people's questions. Again, come and visit us at our booth and enjoy Vegas. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. So we have some time for questions. I see there are a couple, so shoot. Yes, sir. How, how, how does the, uh, the collaboration where you're doing with the screen sharing and the charts and everything else, how does it look from an audience going, how do you 
Uh, so um, anyone who has linked platform, uh, so the, uh, I'll repeat the question because we're being webcast. Uh, the question was, really excited about collaboration. What does it look like for anonymous joins, uh, guest, web app? How does that look? Uh, the answer is, anyone who has linked client, you'll notice that we were just on uh, the fat client there, but you could be on web uh, app, you could be on a tablet, you could be on a phone. Uh, you saw the new announcements of the phone that you get now content on it. All of those devices will receive all that information for that PowerPoint or, or, or the content share where you actually see that full markup experience. Uh, if you like that, stay tuned to EC because that's going to also change in regards to what we can do uh, further around how other devices could then interact back to other things. Did I, did I do too much reveal? <laughs> yeah, that was the Uber thing that you weren't supposed to talk about. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but absolutely, get, uh, I think uh, be, be excited around Enterprise Connect and what, what, what's coming also from there. But today, you could absolutely interact by plugging in, be able to have group and uh, 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 seating at your uh, desk and have a great experience. Yes, sir. So I love the system, love lots of things about it, especially the interaction. One gap that I see, though, especially when we're, we're competing with Cisco and things like that, is the video, is there any roadmap to make the quality of the video better? Absolutely. So first off, with smarts, uh, so with each LRS today, um, you'll notice that it's a fixed focus camera um, designed by Microsoft. And we actually do that intentionally. Um, and so the reason why is because we do an ultra wide angle that sees all the room space. Uh, with smart, we have a 190 degree field of view camera, which uh, allows you to be able to see all the seats at the table. And Microsoft and Smart share a similar vision that it's not just important to see the person who's speaking, but seeing your reaction to that person speaking is equally valuable for the remote facilitator. So we believe firmly in that, and when you introduce other cameras like Pentel Zooms and so forth, the challenges around how do, you have to provide a near preview, which freaks out the Alice from accounting that doesn't like being on camera, and they have to see themselves, and all those kind of challenges get reintroduced. Today's smart camera with the smart view cam already has built in pan tilt zoom on it, so you can go into the admin and actually do different distance changes and so forth. And that we actually have a very healthy roadmap overall on camera. Maybe Warren would be best positioned to answer that question. Yeah, and we're going to have some, there's going to be some other enhancements that are going to go on. I mean, the base codec is Microsoft 264 SVC. Uh, there shouldn't be any, from a quality perspective, difference um, from the codec perspective. Um, I think that it's, there's going to be a bunch of camera enhancements that we're going to do. Um, but I think in the way of streaming that, uh, there's probably some work that Microsoft's going to do that you're going to see um, on them enhancing the, on the SVC codec. So. Cool. Great question. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Bandwidth requirements. So the question is, like the room system, Planning and deployment. Tell me about bandwidth. So at the end of the day, uh, that, that question is that, really. Is that how that translated? <laughs> <laughs> I like planning deployment. <laughs> Added a little. Selective there. hearing. <laughs> Always be closing. <laughs> All right. So uh, around bandwidth, uh, at the end of the day, this is link client. Uh, so I want to be clear with you guys. This came from building 31, now building 6, from Redmond. It's link client. So it's using the same H.264, SVC, VC1 you do on a client. Uh, the difference is, is this is a 1080p camera that's plugged in. And when you use it on a laptop, you might be on a 720p uh, camera or another type of VGA quality one, which might not consume the same amount of resources. But uh, our normal allocation on it is around recommendations of 1.7 meg. But you could actually do bandwidth uh, caps and a whole bunch of other strategies for those remote locations to still manage this just like you do on Link Server. If you're not familiar with Link Server 2013, those tools are a lot easier to be able to manage. And actually, when you provision a link room system, it'll actually create a separate group in your link uh, area where you can actually manage some of those thresholds a little bit easier. Great question. Yes, sir. What are the file types that you can work on uh, you know, in this session? The answer is actually anything. Um, so you can actually even mark up on a desktop that's not even a program at all. Um, so you can actually work ultimately on those areas where you saw the save as feature set. You can either save directly in your program, like Excel, like Office, where you actually save it in the program natively, 
or uh, we even allow you to be able to work on PDF and save into PDF if you'd like to. We also allow for when a program cannot be saved, you can actually capture that and then be able to save that as PowerPoint or PDF. So PDF to lock down, uh, PowerPoint for editing later. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think, Warren? Where, where are we at with file type uh, roadmap? I mean, I think we have to see what reaction is to this and see what, what else is needed. Interestingly enough, interesting story, there was this um, uh, car company, uh, Japanese car company. They actually moved away from Link uh, room systems and decided not to deploy specifically because they couldn't do PDF markup. And so that was kind of the first big one. So. Probably it's likely that things like AutoCAD, and I mean, we are working on AutoCAD and Navision, some of the architectural kind of 3D modeling stuff. Um, things like SolidWorks would probably be on that list, um, those types of programs. So the, those would be the ones that we'd probably crack next, but we got to get this in the market and see what people are asking for. So, Absolutely. Uh, let's go you, sir, first. Uh, for Mac and Mac support. So with SMART, uh, we support both cross-platforms of both Macs and PCs for the plug-in for this interaction model we're talking about today. Um, if you're familiar with the larger SMART, we're a full cross-platform company when it comes to computing. And we uh, enable that full experience on, on the, the two big ones. Yes, sir? Uh, just a question. Uh, one, release date, roundabout. Uh, and the second question is, for people who already have a root system, you mentioned that there's going to be an upgrade path. That's right. Great question. So the question is, I already have some room systems and I'm excited about them. I think that's what I heard. <laughs> How do I retrofit? And then what do I do in the future and when does it get come out? So when it comes out is uh, uh, second quarter, so early summer uh, time frame. Uh, second is it'll be an accessory that you order from Smart uh, and then that will allow you to be able to retrofit. It includes hardware because you need the physical USB cable to talk to the laptop to make that work. So when you're doing path planning or conduit runs on your link room system rooms today, plan to keep a, uh, uh, I guess, a conduit run to be able to make that happen. Absolutely. So, and then the other pack is around uh, Meeting Pro Personal Edition, which is a, a software pack from Smart that lets you have this smart board driver experience and have an unbound experience overall. So uh, that is uh, what can fuel that, and uh, you can actually start trying that out today. That's a shipping product. You can go to smarttech.com, hit downloads, download, and you can start experiencing what that's like today on your room system. Okay, are you looking at any kind of wireless computing to the laptop? Cool. So the question is, what about wireless? Where's wireless going? Uh, so of course with Link, uh, that's the answer with Link Room System is use Link to connect and you can absolutely connect it. And if you haven't seen the feature set, um, Link Room System is very, um, let's call it intelligent, where when you join a Link Room System meeting, it knows that Link Room System's in the call. And so the Link client will ask you, are you in the room? And when you hit yes, it'll automatically mute your microphone and speaker so you have a full annotation experience for doing a presentation share or receive of that information and give you that collaborative experience. I think you were at... You were asking about the, the video USB link. The, yeah, I, the answer is yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're I mean, we, I, I can't talk a lot more about that, but I mean, it'll be all the things that you think about when you think about short range colored uh, <laughs> protocol. <right? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> come from Sweden or. Know. Yes, sir. Any motion. plans for motion? We've, we've played a lot with that and did a lot of research. You know, we've done research, Microsoft's done research, we've glued connects, and, and there's actually a lot of um, these uh, types of, uh, um, you know, Z, Z, what they call Z cameras now out there. You can go get them a dime a dozen. Um, some are better than others. Um, but the, the reality is, is that in a meeting room, it's very, very difficult because you don't know who is authority. Um, in that meeting room and facial recognition you can kind of get away with some of that stuff but if someone puts up their hand or wants to do the motion gesture and the other person has got the baton you know the software got the so the user model for that is very difficult and you can actually see 
uh, you can see an interesting evolution of that in Xbox One because what they've done is because that they had that full motion control of Xbox One, but you notice now what they've done is there's a lot more reliance on voice because that motion control of having multiple people in the room is a very difficult thing. It's okay for one to one, but when you get four or five people, it becomes difficult. So, no, no near-term plans on that. We're, we're keep continue to watch and see what happens. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for the, uh, the your time and attention today, guys. Make sure that you think about that hands-on lab, Copperleaf 12. Uh, you can they double the amount of uh, resources. You can start learning how to deploy today. Actually, get that experience so you can uh, uh, feel more confident on your deployments. Uh, there's a uh, session at 1 o'clock today that Anton and Scott Brown are co-presenting uh, about Link Room System uh, in, in its greater uh, area. Uh, please, please attend that session. And also on Thursday, uh, Unified Squared is doing best practices on your deployment strategy. So how do you catch that lightning in a bottle that Greg saw and Victor saw and how you get your rollouts going well and your organization just asking for more? So thanks so much for your time, guys. Have a great rest of the uh, time at uh, Lake Conference. <laughs>